2018 version, but Zotero should automatically update. I think it updated for this year for, I know APA changed, for example. Okay, so um, I'm going to demonstrate uh, for you what Zotero looks like and how it looks like on my computer. Um, if it looks differently on your computer, that's okay. We will troubleshoot um, or we will stay behind to, to ask any questions. So this is just a, a session to, uh, to watch um, and to see how it works in action, okay? Um, so really it's easy. You can go on to Zotero.org and click on download. Um, and when you click on download, there's these two, um, two options for you. And I also will note that I sent you a PDF guide um, with screenshots last night. Night. Um, it's kind of like a, a how-to step-by-step guide. So if you want to follow along with that guide or if you um, fall behind, that's definitely okay. Um, so that's there for you. Um, so here I have Zotero for Windows. Um, some of you, it also works uh, if you have a MacBook. Uh, you can download Zotero for Mac, and I also have screenshots later of what that looks like. Um, so I would download this onto your computer. This automatically should come with a Word uh, plug-in. Did anyone have any question? Was that a question I heard? Was that, I don't know, I can't see. I'm only seeing my screen. So if someone can come on the mic and say if we have a question. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, if I may ask a question. Um, I have uh, Surface Pro 7 and uh, that has uh, Edge as the internet browser and if you click on download it shows also the Zotero connector install edge connector or just Zotero 5.0 for Windows. So I guess I take only Zotero 5.0 for Windows. Over. Right, yeah. Yes. Um, and actually, I've only used, um, I would highly recommend um, Google Chrome or Mozilla Fox. I would not, um, I don't recommend Safari, for instance. I've never really had success with Safari or Edge, but maybe you can tell me differently um, if those are very successful. So, yeah, so that's what I would do. I would download uh, for either for Windows or for Mac. Um, so when you do the desktop download, it will download Zotero to your desktop. Um, so it should look something like this, right? So you can see Zotero and you can see all the lovely sources that you will be um, writing for your uh, ISRP or your thesis. Um, so that's what it would look like. It also comes with a nifty word function. Um, as Moha mentioned, this is how you're uh, able to um, write references in Word. So I'll get to that in a little bit later. Um, so that I would definitely download this. I would also, in addition to downloading um, this portion, I would also download it the connector, okay? So the connector allows you to save sources to your browser. So let's just say that you're browsing um, on an internet source and you say, oh, this is a really good source and I want to save it. Um, that is how you're able to uh, save it to your Zotero so that it can automatically pull the metadata from your source um, and save it onto your browser. OK, um, so once it allows once you um, have downloaded both of these, so Taro may ask you for to log in to um, to create an account. Um, and so I would recommend creating an account because Sotero is kind of like a cloud-based uh, platform, as Moha mentioned, to help you organize all of your sources, okay? Um, so you can go through and register for an account. It's free. It should never ask you for money. Um, I would recommend not putting your NDU email account um, just because um, after you leave NDU, you might not have access to email anymore, right? So I would put like maybe your personal email um, account. And just to see, I'm just going to log in with my account credentials. I apologize. Um, when I created this account, I was in high school. So it's uh, my favorite two animals are dinosaurs and dogs. So that's my account name. Uh, but let's go to um, the web library, OK? So a great benefit of Zotero is that it will save all of your sources anytime that you need. 
And so, for example, if my computer crashes, right, what do I do? Are all my sources lost? The answer is no. So Taro will log all of your sources and will send it up to the cloud. Um, so again, these are all of my sources, um, as you can see from my Zotero desktop function. So if something happened to my computer, it's okay because I have everything saved onto the cloud, which is why I like um, using Zotero, right? Um, and so for some of you who have mentioned, um, you know, oh, um, I spend hours and hours and hours, you know, writing my citations or creating a bibliography, I will say, you know, you only need a few minutes to create your bibliography uh, in Zotero uh, because there's some lovely tools that we have on the Zotero website, uh, which you can discover. But, you know, if I was going to write a paper, I said, hey, I use these sources. All I do is highlight them and you can create a bibliography right here. And you can see it says Chicago Manual Style 17th edition. And you can see right here that it is in alphabetical order. So you can already see that Zotero does all the hard work for you. Um, Michael, to answer your question, what if I was writing an APA style? You could definitely also change it to APA as well. So that's just something um, that is located online on the Zotero website itself. Um, I'm going to show you what the desktop version looks like and how it connects to uh, Word. Before I begin that though, um, I do want to um, pretend like I'm going to um, look for a source, okay? So here I am, I'm writing paper two and I need um, I need some sources. Um, I need to research um, something about my country, right? So I'm just going to research this topic on Jordanian security. Okay, some of you are from Jordan. Some of you are uh, writing, um, need to uh, look for articles about um, security. Um, this article looks great. It looks uh, explaining the non-encampment of Syrian refugees. Oh, yeah, this sounds like a great article, right? So here I am on Google Scholar, right? I, um, you know, did not search tools. I came on upon this article, right? And, you know, I'm reading through this article and I say, oh, you know what? This article would be great to save. How do I save this article? Well, when you download the Zotero browser, it automatically comes with um, a little nifty save to Zotero function, okay? So all you have to do is just click on this button and it will ask you, hey, do you wanna save it to your library? Um, Zotero also gives you the function of having multiple um, folders. So you could have an ISRP folder, a 6100 folder. If I'm writing a paper about statecraft, I can keep my uh, all of my sources organized and put it in the statecraft folder. If I have my ISRP, I can save it there. Right now, I'm just going to save it to, oh, let's save it to my NDU 6100 folder. Why not? Um, and so, you know, this this can be from, um, this is, you know, access provided by NDU library. But let's just say you wanted to go on to Washington Post, okay? Um, let's let's see what's what's going on in the Washington Post today. OK, um, let's see. Well, you know, what we could do is we could talk about um, coronavirus since you wrote that for your uh, first paper. Here we have um, an article. Um, it says uh, talks about the live um, updates from the coronavirus. I'm just yeah, sorry. I'm just trying to click through my ads. Um, so if I wanted to, you know, read this article and I say, oh, this will be a great article to save. How do I save it? Again, you can go through to your browser and see it says save to Zotero. OK, Washington Post. So you see here um, earlier, this one was like a page. It looked like a small, like little page. Um, but if you go to something like a newspaper, it will change into like a little newspaper emoji. That's okay. It's still the same um, Zotero button. So that's what I would do. I would just click on it. Um, and then I, I'm going to save that one to my library, actually. And so um, once you save it to your library, um, all the sources should 
automatically be saved to your Zotero. So let me just do a refresh my Zotero library. This is my online library, my cloud that I have saved all the sources to. And you can tell that um, I think it did save. I think it's refreshing. But I think it did save. Okay, remember the journal article that I had here, right? You can see that it saved um, things like the title, it saved the publication, it saved the volume, the issue number, the page numbers, the author's name and uh, last name and date, the DOI information. So all of that information was just captured by a single click. And that is really what about Zotero is that I don't have to memorize who the name, the author's last name and who the author's first name is, right? I can just click and it will be there. What about this Washington article I saved, right? I clicked on a little icon that said saved to Zotero. Was that saved? Uh, and looking here, it, see, it seems like it was saved, right? Here are all the authors uh, that the Washington Post, um, the number, the authors that contribute to this newspaper article, right? And it has a URL um, and it has the title and it, it, I don't have to copy down all the authors that uh, wrote this article anymore because Zotero will do that for me. Okay, um, sorry. All right, and then um, before we get to questions, um, you know, most of you are probably wondering, sure, um, well, you know, how do I actually put that into my Word document? Well, let's see. If you downloaded the um, Zotero desktop app, so this is my app, right? You get it automatically updated with this newspaper and automatically updated with the journal article, okay? Um, so what do I do? Well, I go into my Word document and I'm just typing, I'm writing my paper, I'm writing my paper for 6100, okay? And I said, you know, I need to cite something here. How am I going to cite? Here, it should have a little Zotero icon. I apologize, my work laptop won't let me update my Word. But um, when you download Zotero, it should automatically update. It should automatically uh, pop up with your document preferences. And so, um, for those of us, I know Filippo, you asked this. Michael, you asked about this. Um, you know, how do I know which citation to use? Um, you know, I would say click on Chicago style full note. Okay, if you're in uh, CIC, if you're in um, if you're in National Work College, and if you're in CISA, I would click on footnotes. If you are in Eisenhower School, I would click on endnotes. Okay, so footnotes and endnotes. Make sure you toggle that here. Make sure you have to automatically update citations and press OK. You will see the Zotero um, function, like a pop-up bar, pop-up, right? And you know, I want to cite something here, right? So I'm gonna, I'm going to um, research my source, okay? So my source that I found online was the non-encampment of Syrian refugees, okay? So I'm going to press enter, and here we have my source here, and just to see if it's saved. Here are all of my sources. Wow, so I did not have to type that out at all. That's what I love about Zotero is that I can just cite something um, and not have to type it at all. I'm saving lots of time because I'm a strategic thinker, right? So let me add a source, okay? So let me add that Washington Post source I saved earlier. Um, do uh, I forgot what the name of the article was, but this one, the this one you all read was the coronavirus one. Okay, so let's press enter and let's see if that cited. Let me go scroll down. Wow, again, look at that! It cited everything in Chicago style for me, so I didn't have to. How miraculous! Um, so yeah, so that's what Zotero can do, and then. I'm just going to see if this will create a bibliography or not. Sorry, um, because this is like a macro, uh, it 